Okay guys, we're back in the field. I'm going to make a, a final video on disking here. Had a question about the tractor that I'm pulling with the other day. It's a Massey Ferguson 6180. It's only got 115 horsepower, but the way I make that tractor pull with 115 horsepower is I make every horsepower that tractor have, uh, I make every horsepower work for me. So obviously we've got radial tires and a front rack of weights on there. There's my wife running from me. She didn't know I was coming behind the tractor. But we also have these inner weights on the tractor wheels there. So the tractor is weighted down to pull. That in combination with the radial tires really allow this tractor to pull. Uh, so we're in this field. This is where we made the uh, corn combining video. This is the long, long, long skinny bottom. Uh, the corn here made a shade over 150. Uh, some spots were way above that and some spots out there in the middle where we have some moisture issues where hair less but I'm it averaged right at 150. So the things that I want to look at here I started disking this field last night and uh, for one disc pass I want you to see how fine that soil is working. If I reach down here and grab a root ball and break it apart you can see that there uh, even though we're full till and we're organic there is good texture, good blocky texture in that soil. Uh, it's working up smooth enough here. Uh, what I was trying to say in the video is because of the drought, it's working up smooth enough because it's dry enough. Uh, this soil has real good organic matter. It's probably a little over five and a half percent. But it's working up smooth enough that I will be able to come in now with that aggressive field cultivator I showed you last spring. And with one pass, uh, have a seed bed. So over here where I'm working, uh, and the ground that hasn't been worked yet, a couple things there, you see some uh, manure piles out there. So we did run cows out here during the winter, and when we, when I say we run cows, we have fed them in a confined area on the edge of the field in order to uh, limit traffic out in the field. But we are also uh, feeding the cows, you know, silage, hay, uh, clover. Uh, I don't think this group of cows got any uh, supplemental feed, you know, like corn or anything. Uh, this was the dry cow band that was here. But anyway, we uh, fed cows and they have come out here and they have pooped on the field and they have eaten a fair amount of the residue. Uh, you know, friends of mine plant lot uh, plant cover crops and they put lots of money in their cover crops well nature looking down at the ground here has given us a cover crop there's a curly dock germinated last fall uh, that might be a wild daisy there not sure what that is but we have a fair amount of these cool season weeds out here and they have been growing in the soil all winter long there's one that's dying from yesterday on my first disc bask uh, but they have acted as a cover crop growing in this soil and uh, they have kept the biological activity going in this soil uh, ideally the season would have changed and the ground would have mellowed up uh, by now but the season has not changed yet so the last thing I want to show you, we're trying to get down in here close. Uh, you see right there, I'm holding that corn stalk. You see that frost crack right there? Uh, inside that frost crack, interesting thing on the organic farm here, I can see one baby clover, two, three, I can see four baby clovers coming. And those are holdouts. Uh, uh, we had clover on here before this corn crop. Uh, but that is volunteer clovers coming that are also acting as that cover crop and enriching the soil. But the frost cracks from winter have not even closed on this ground yet. And for this being April, I think it's the 17th today, and the frost cracks not having closed yet because we haven't had a packing rain yet, and the soil hasn't woken up for the spring, uh, that definitely is irregular. But then we've been seeing a lot of environmental irregularities uh, there's another cow pie there's a dandelion blooming 
and so those are wonderful things to be working into the soil i'll film just a little bit in the tractor and we'll talk about speed okay guys looking back there you can see that the disc is jumping around just a little bit uh, that's because we did run cows on this ground during the winter and they did pack it down a little bit uh, it might be a little bit hard to see but here we're into a part of the field where there's a lot more uh, green material growing this is kind of a little higher part of the field uh, my speed has slowed down a hair right now I'm running at five miles per hour uh, it's making the track to work that's why Deborah's hand is shaking on the video uh, but my rpms I hold them down uh, I hold my rpms down the 2000 to 2200 the reason I do that is for the fuel savings uh, fuel economy obviously diesel is one of the big input costs for the organic farm because we do do a lot more work and uh, I like to be as frugal as I can with fuel so I'm just making this tractor work, making him pull for all these work, and just got the bit on the log and give him one last, last shot here straight up ahead of what I have to look forward to. In this field, I have rows that are over three quarters of a mile long, so at five miles per hour, it takes a while to get from one end to the other. Thanks, guys. So one last thing I wanted to show you guys, I'm down here next to the river valley and I have hawks. They're not red tail hawks. Uh, well there's the crows working with me. See the crows, but I have flocks of birds that follow me and they're working in the soil. Uh, yesterday, there he is way up high. There goes Mr. Crow. There goes the crows. They sure like to fly away the minute that the tractor shows up. But I had a hawk yesterday. I don't know what he is, but he's the prettiest little hawk. He followed me around all day. He lands up in those trees along the river. He follows me. And uh, there he is, way off in the distance. I don't think you can quite catch him. You might be able to, but the hawk follows me watching for mice. And he likes to sit in those tall trees by the river. And every time I make a pass, he'll come and he'll follow me for a while. He must know where the mice are at. But uh, the biological diversity in this field is just astounding. Thanks, guys.